everyone, it's Ivan with KitBadger.com. I am here at SHOT Show 2020 with... John Tamburino, Product Manager for Suppressors at SIG Sauer. And he's gonna basically run us through SIG's new line of suppressors. SIG's taking a new direction with the suppressor line. We're moving away from the welded baffle construction and moving into monolithic 3D printed design. There's a couple reasons for this. Uh, <clears throat> some, of the, some of the details and um, features of this suppressor were born out of military requirements, number one. And number two, we're trying to offer the best sound and, and gas reduction in a suppressor on the market. With your older suppressors, they were titanium baffles welded all the way around, mm -hmm. a stack of them, more or less traditional. And with this, totally different approach to it. Yep, so you'll notice that this is DMLS technology. <clears throat> this is, offers a couple benefits. Number one, uh, it provides a stronger tannin, a suppressor, which we proved over in testing. And number two, it open, really opens up our design box. So instead of being restricted by machines and how they operate and we can machine metal, we can open up our design box and pretty much build whatever we need. And so this is basically 3D printed, right? Yes. Okay. And two different materials for these? Inconel and titanium. <coughs> and obviously lighter with titanium. Right. But Inconel's properties lend themselves to higher rates of fire, machine guns? Yeah, hard use stuff, short barrels, 5.56s, five, five, machine guns, things like that, yes. Okay, and right now, what calibers are you making right now? So these are going to be offered in 5.56, five, five, six, uh, 6 6.8, and 7.62. Okay, and 6.8 directly targeting military's move towards that caliber of choice. Military will also serve as our 6.5 can for the market as well, if they wanted more of a dedicated 6.5 can. All right, and while the legacy cans were both direct thread as well as your locking mount, that also ended up changing, correct? Yep, so before we had a taper mount, uh, it was a good system, but we decided to move in a different direction and start to build a, a more robust system, I'll say. Our old SRD suppressor line, you were either stuck with direct thread or QD. With the new SLX line, We've offered a little bit of modularity to the customer where we can swap back and forth between direct thread and QD by unscrewing the core from the mounts and then putting on uh, the opposite mount. While someone can now basically go back and forth between QD or direct thread, you've also changed your actual mounting system and the way it locks up, right? Correct, yeah. So we went to more of a, what we're calling a clutch lock design. Uh, basically how it works is there's three cams in here that bite down in the bearing surface of your muzzle brake or, or flash hider. Um, so the operation would be <clears throat> turn your suppressor on the gun with this mounted, lock it down, and you're done. The cams bite into the uh, muzzle brake or flash hider and it won't allow it to reverse back off. Okay, and always hand tight, no tools. Right. All right. And you're still using tapers for alignment and everything like yep, that? Yep, so the, uh, all our barrels are still tapered. It features a taper in here when it mounts to the barrel, but it's still compatible with the 90 degree shoulders as well. Okay. Compatible with 90 degree shoulders with some sort of, like, as it is, or? As it is, yep. <clears throat> okay. And with your new muzzle devices, are they backwards compatible with the old stuff? So unfortunately not, because we had to change the geometry in order for this system to work, so it, they will not be backwards compatible. All right, and new muzzle devices, this obviously a flash hider. Do you have muzzle brakes too? We will offer muzzle brakes as well, yes. Okay. So one of the design focuses of the suppressor was born out of military requirements. Uh, the new buzzword in the, in the military is low toxic fume. And we accomplished that by venting gases through the suppressor and evacuating through the front cap in order to reduce toxic, toxic gas in the face, as well as slow, that, slow the gun down a little bit while firing. Okay, so this isn't the, put the can on and just super rapid rate of fire, destroy all the internals? Nope, no it's not. <laughs> all right, and you guys have, I was actually looking at video two of basically shot through thermal and showing the gas come back. Mm -hmm. uh, do you notice a really big difference? Obviously, with a piston gun, you're getting less in general, but in your experience, have you noticed a big difference, especially with DI guns? Sure, yep. So you're, you're gonna get that initial blast back through the gas tube, of course, but um, 
you know, you're preventing that excess that would come down the barrel with a traditional suppressor with something like this. All right, and with the design, obviously gas is getting poured out the front, so we're reducing a bunch of that back pressure. Flash signature and stuff like that? Yeah, so this uh, front cap here features a built-in flash hider. Uh, that's another pretty large military requirement that they, they come and ask for. Because uh, so usually it's kind of opt-in either or. Yep, so it's, uh, it's, it's a give and take, right? So it, you have to find a balance between how much gas you can vent and fold all the other features into it, sound, uh, flash, durability, things like that. Very cool. With traditional cans, occasionally things can go catastrophically wrong. Often it's on the user's end as far as misalignment, stuff like that. And baffle strikes, we know what happens on traditional cans like that we've had. This is kind of dipping into new territory with 3D print and stuff. How, I guess, what's kind of the analog to this between the traditional cans and stuff like that? <laughs> right, so if, if, if I can start with the durability of these cans, um, we've proven in testing that 3D printing is, is more durable than a legacy welded can. Welds uh, traditionally in a can are the weak points of them. Um, while this prints at either you know, up to 99.9% .9 density, which is just as good as billet, uh, in a monolithic form. So okay. ultra strong. Uh, the next question you're gonna ask me is, is it repairable since it's just one piece? Yes. And, and the answer is yes. So uh, we, have a, we have the ability to cut a piece off, uh, have a new core printed, have that welded back on, coat it, and send it back to the customer. Okay, waiting. so right here, this is the serialized section, the very bottom piece. Yes. Like, least likely place to have something catastrophic yes. happen on yep. a cam. So, okay. um, and in the event that, you know, we can't do it, we'll, we'll make sure that we can take care of the customer, even though, unfortunately, you'd have to wait <laughs> 10 months to get, to get a new one. <laughs> All right, no, that's cool. I mean, the peace of mind of if something catastrophic does happen, it is basically repairable, because usually bad things happen down here towards the end. Right. No, that's, that's big. Uh, so you have, you have the two lines as far as ink and L, like hard use, and then you have titanium, lighter weight. Lighter weight, more volume in, in that can. Because of the internal design? Because of the diameter. So the diameter, uh, uh, so the, this is a 155, this goes okay. up to 175, so you get a little bit more volume in the titanium, so you get a little bit better sound depending on what you're shooting on. All right. Question with those two. So you already have your legacy cans, and these are coming out. Weight difference between the two, since you do have Inconel as well as titanium in the legacy also. Yeah, so they're, they're, it doesn't differ that much, quite frankly. These are printed fully out of Inconel, where our SRD series of suppressors were a combination of Inconel and stainless steel. Okay. Um, that does provide this a little bit more durability. I think we do gain an ounce or two uh, within the suppressor itself, but we are gaining durability because of that. All right, what about on the titanium one? So the titanium ones actually turn out lighter uh, than our current uh, setup. Uh, but there was, it's just because of the baffle structure that we had before versus the internal print structure that we have now. Uh, so we, we actually gain, uh, we, or we lose Lost some weight. Some weight. Yeah, we lose some All weight. right, very cool. So as we move into the new line of uh, SLX suppressors, we're not going to neglect the old SRD series. Uh, we're still going to support those with muzzle brakes, repair, maintenance, things like that. Um, as we move forward, these will be available to the commercial market in late Q2, early Q3. So we'll be All on right. the lookout for those. Very cool. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate your time out here. My pleasure. And yeah, running me through uh, your new cans. I think there's some pretty cool stuff going on with them. Thank you. Definitely. But as always, thanks for joining us at kipadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.